because no matter how far from your original plan, plan B may be, it, it, God is still in control. God is behind the scenes and he moves all the scenes he is behind. All things eventually work together for good to those who love God and are called according to his plan. So, Jesus asked, Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? And yet not one of them, not one of them will fall to the ground apart from the will of your Father. So don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Well, I would hope so. Things don't just happen to those who love God. They're planned by his own dear hand, then molded and shaped and timed by his clock. Things don't just happen. They're planned. Things don't just happen to those who love God, to those who have taken their stand. No matter the lot, the course or the price, things don't just happen. They're planned. In the last chapter of his novel, Paralandra, C.S. Lewis writes this, quote, If there appears to be no plan, that's because it is all planned. If world affairs are by blind chance or human design, then, friends, we are at the end of things. But if world affairs are by divine plan, then we are at the beginning of things, and the very best is yet to come. When you come face to face with plan B, trust the sovereignty of God. And secondly, trust the wisdom of God. For God knows the end from the beginning. Everything, one and everything is a finished product in his eyes. We hear only the discord of the rehearsal. He hears the completed symphony. We see the rough draft. He reads the final manuscript. We see the splattered paint on canvas. He sees the ultimate masterpiece. Now, I do not believe that blind fate controls all of our affairs. There's no such thing as blind fate, but only blind people and blind leaders of the blind. And they'll all fall into the pit of darkness and despair when they fail to see the glory of the divine foreknowledge and providence. Remember this. Every new day must pass God's inspection before it gets to you. Plan B often surprises you but never him. A, mind, a man's mind passes his, uh, he plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. God always gives his best to those who leave the choice to him. Be not dismayed, whatever the be tied. God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide. God will take care of you. Trust the sovereignty of God. Trust the wisdom of God. And thirdly, trust the love of God. There's no plan B that can separate you from God's love. 
None. Paul said, neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. For the love of God is broader than the measure of man's mind, and the heart of the eternal is most wonderfully kind. Trust the sovereignty of God, the wisdom of God, the love of God, and finally, do the will of God. Because whatever plan B you happen to be facing right now, God has given you clear direction in his holy scriptures. He has commanded you to do certain things and he has forbidden you to do other things. The Ten Commandments are your manufacturer's maintenance manual to put your life together for plan B. And in addition to the commandments of the Old Testament, you have the model of Jesus Christ in the New Testament. And so, as you struggle with plan B, ask yourself this simple question. What would Jesus do? With Jesus as your example and guide, you can brighten the corner where you are. Instead of complaining and despairing about plan B, Jesus will give you the courage to change what can be changed. He'll give you the patience to to accept what cannot be changed, and he'll give you the wisdom to know the difference. When Israel was carried off into Babylonian exile, which was definitely plan B, Jeremiah, the the weeping prophet who actually foretold it, wrote to the exiles saying these words. I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. That promise was given not only to the ancient Israelites, but it was given to you and to me today. What we call plan B, when it is molded and blessed by the hand of God, will accomplish far more than we ever dreamed possible with what we thought was plan A. And so, to him who by means of his power working in us is able to do much more than we could ever ask or even think of, to God be the glory in his church in Christ Jesus for all time, forever and ever. Amen. Let's stand now to affirm that by singing, To God be the glory, great things he has done.